Let's start with taking a nice, full, soft breath into your belly, letting it out with a big sigh. <sighs> Very nice. That was almost symphonic. Let's do it again. Big inhale. <sighs> Beautiful. And just let your eyes close, your face soften. Coming into the awareness of right now. Feeling your breath move in and out, just on its own gently. Knowing that the breath really breathes you. And that each breath is filled with life force with particles of energy. And that energy is also all around us, in the leaves on the trees, in the soil that covers our beautiful planet, in the water around us, in the sky, and we breathe that breath, that life force, together with all of nature and all of divinity. And that breath is filled with love. So from this place of gentleness and love, We are in a sanctuary together, in this beautiful family, this day that we've created, each one of us. Our hearts, like beautiful beads on a necklace strung together, And as we leave this evening, we do so from this sanctuary of the heart and soul. We do it in quiet and the peace that we take with us, inside of us, created by the love that we share the energy of cryon, the beauty of the day, and the gratitude to all those that have made this day possible, that have met, made each one of your journeys here into this present moment possible, the magic that's happened, the people, the places, this family of light and the love of Cryon. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. It sometimes takes a moment or two for you to move into an area of consciousness that would allow something like this. So many times we have said this, and we say it again, is the man in the chair channeling or just giving his own opinion? Is the process that is claimed to be here actually here? Is there a door that is opened to spirit at the moment or not? And this depends upon many things. And in the past, we have started to discuss these things. We've talked about the human filters. We've talked about Akashic filters. The things that would keep you from recognizing spirit. The things that would keep you from recognizing truth. Because of what you've learned. 
Knowledge is this way. It has helped you, and sometimes it doesn't. Is this real or not? And so you must discern the process of channeling before you ever even discern the message. You have free choice, dear human, to discern that this is accurate and true or not. It's going to be important that you do that in this particular message. In this message, I am going to give you some science and also some possibilities, some probabilities, and revelations of poor thinking. And all of this is a benevolent push for you to know things that are coming, perhaps, or to change the way that you even think. The biggest filter of humanity, the one that keeps you from actual truth, believe it or not, is called knowledge. That which you know is knowledge. That's what you do not know is future knowledge. Now, every single scientist understands the difference. Every single one. For they know what is coming is going to teach them what they don't know yet. Even so, they take what they know or think they know and completely let it temper the experiments of what they don't know. They base the future on what they know even though they know better. <laughs> A medical doctor will look in the past and he'll remember the times when humans would report to the barber shop for healing. <laughs> and that's when they will be bled. By the way, that's the reason for the barber pole and the red on it. It's tradition. <clears throat> so you go get healed in the barber shop by being bled. This, of course, led many to death because there was no understanding even of germs. Doctors know this. They laugh at this. You've come so far. So they absolutely know that what is coming is going to set everything they know on its ear someday. And yet, they are absolutely and completely closed to what it might be. In fact, the bias is just more of the same. This is how they think. A computer technician thinking about the future and what has happened in the past will extrapolate literally what is going to happen to processing speed and memory capacity in the future. And everything they can dream of that might happen to a computer will be wrong. More memory and faster speed and smaller. Sometimes the head of a pin will be the most amazing thing like the brain. Like the brain. Well, they missed something. Let me give you a hint to where it's going that they don't know. Fifty years from now, there will be computers and they'll be completely and totally different. You see, instead of changing chips, they're going to have to deal with life. Parts of computing will have to have life, biology in the computer. By the way, that gives a whole new meaning to catching a virus. <laughs> it's coming. It has to. There will be a combination, literally, of circuitry and life that is grown on a chip that will enhance computing power and memory and what is being asked for literally in a computer will be completely different. What you ask a computer to do today will be laughed at compared to what you ask for it to do in 50 years. But it will be there. 
You don't know what you don't know. And the knowledge of what you do know then tempers what you will expect. Five areas I'm going to talk about. I'm going to reveal new information tonight. Even about that which is metaphysical in this speech, if you wish, about knowledge. Physicists are among the kinds of science and the scientists who expect change, who know that they don't know everything, are so aware of it. And yet the mistakes they make is to take known physics, that which is absolute, and then apply it to everything they don't know and expect more of the same. I point to the revelation and the discoveries of Vera Rubin when she found out that the stars that orbit the middle of your galaxy don't behave in a Newtonian or Kepler fashion. Your solar system has objects around the sun and the way they orbit is very definable by Newtonian and Kepler kinds of physics. The objects that are further away from the sun go slower. The ones closer to the sun go faster. And her discovery about stars orbiting the galaxy was absolutely reversed. <laughs> the stars that are further away go faster. What she discovered was that all of the stars go the same speed in relationship to the middle like they were pasted on a plate all revolving together like a pizza. They do not follow the rules of the physics that you know. And so rather than physics looking at this saying there is a new law of physics we don't know about yet. What they did instead was to name it dark matter and called it altered Newtonian physics. That's like saying that when you discovered that the earth was round and you thought it was flat, you called it the altered flat earth principle. <laughs> Newton's name is still attached and it has nothing to do with anything he discovered. Dark matter does not exist. Instead, there's a new law of physics that you haven't seen yet. It's a multidimensional law having to do with the quantumness of entanglement of galaxies and stars. It's been there all along. You will see it. You'll slap your heads in <laughs> revelation of what you said and change the rules. But look what you've done with it so far. Look what you've done with the idea you came from the Pleiadians. There are those scientists who are laughing right now that the mythology of the Pleiadians being your seed biology is simply not possible. It's not possible because of physics, they say. Let's talk about the Pleiadian, the system. Let's talk about the truth of it. Then let's talk about the mythology of it and what you don't see and what you don't understand and you don't comprehend because of your knowledge. You call it the seven sisters. There's hundreds of stars in the Pleiades group. Circling these stars is a nebulae, dust particles and gas that create a wonderful blue tinge that you see even in the night sky with a naked eye. Because with the naked eye you can only see the clusters of seven, you see seven sisters. There's actually nine when you use a telescope. Each of the nine have been identified even with names, but there are hundreds of stars. They're approximately 440 light years away. Now that's close. 
You take a look at the distances of clusters, stars. It's close. Now, here's what science says is all wrong with your mythology. You see, it's too young. The whole system of the Pleiades is young. It's approximately a hundred million years old. Now your galaxy is four billion, your planet is at least a billion of that. And the Pleiadians, only a hundred million. So here's what science says. If this could be true that you came from the Pleiadians, it can't be because it didn't even have time to develop life yet based on the way it developed here. <laughs> it's too young. The suppositions apply this way. What you saw on earth is going to happen there. That's incorrect. That life develops only a certain way based upon the way it developed here. That's incorrect. The possibility has never even been broached that perhaps, perhaps, the Pleiadian life as you think it exists was actually implanted there. How about that? It didn't grow. Perhaps it wasn't even natural from the planets it had. That is not even in the computation, is it? Based upon the knowledge you have on the planet, you have discounted completely the possibility of the benevolent star seeds that you have coming from where they came from. Too young, you say. What if their youth has everything to do with who they were, dear ones? <laughs> These are just little, little vignettes of possibility I throw to you to give you things we know so well and the Pleiadians who are here are smiling and know so well. You may be the new kids on the block because life just developed on the planet but they had an entirely different scenario than you did. To become an ascended planet they needed certain kinds of pushes from certain other kinds of planets. They had their own seed biology. Dear ones, it's important that you start thinking out of the box of your knowledge and open up to possibilities that are not what you've seen here. I want to show you some others. There are several categories that we would like to talk about. And they're not in a, in a specific order except for the last one. So let's talk about medicine. What is medicine going to look like? Now we have alluded to this in the past, but the finest of finds, the most elegant of predictions, have no concept of what's coming. What you have today is a reaching out of a limit of chemistry. Now the body is chemistry so it makes sense, does it not, to look at the chemistry in the body and emulate it, to find out how it reacts to disease, therefore to create certain kinds of things that will react differently to cure the disease perhaps to trick the body to do things to make curative uh, elements to save lives it's absolutely normal what you have done and it's going to reach an end very soon because the future of medicine is physics <laughs> not chemistry you're going to start understanding and develop physics physics instruments that are going to speak literally to cellular structure and give it instructions without one chemical. There's always a reaction, isn't there? There's always a side effect. When you push one thing, something else reacts differently, doesn't it? 
How do you like it so far? The elegance of chemistry, the best chemicals you have that are helping with the worst diseases on the planets all have side effects and some are death. And I say, how do you like it so far? Does it seem elegant to you? It isn't. It's just another way of bleeding in the barbershop. And that's what you're going to look at someday and you're going to slap your heads and say, remember the day when we did it with chemicals. Right now, going on, on the planet, are experiments that you wouldn't believe. <clears throat> They're making discoveries to heal some of the most heartbreaking diseases you have. I reveal one because it's not a secret. I never give you things that somebody has not either worked on or thought of with free choice on this planet. That is the guideline of channeling. We can't give it to you. You've got to develop it yourself. However, we can put you in an energy that is a faster one of free choice. That is to say, it's more obvious. Alzheimer's is heartbreaking. There are millions on this planet who develop it, seeming more all the time. It seems that way because you're living longer, and the, the plaque-like material that literally obfuscates that which is memory and clings to the certain parts of the brain, encrusts it, restricts it, imprisons it, and pretty soon you know what happens. Alzheimer's. Is going to be cured with physics. They're starting to find out that the plaque like substance that imprisons those parts of the brain of memory remembrance is shatterable with sound. <laughs> with high frequency sounds tuned a certain frequency a certain way, the sheaths are literally dissolving and coming off. There's a lot of research to do. But it's a eureka moment, realizing that physics alone, without chemistry and no side effects whatsoever, can keep it from happening and cure those who have it. It's coming. It's coming. It's going to happen with energy. There are those working on stem cell technology right now who are using physics to guide the stem cells in order to create new cells. Stem cells created from the umbilical cord of the newborn without chemistry. Dear ones, the future is not more chemicals. And yet, to the chemist and to the doctor, they're expecting better pills. <laughs> Never seeing what might happen. Now this is caused from the filter of knowledge. What you have and you know then gives you what you think is going to take place. It literally blocks you from seeing some of the potentials that you may have. Let's talk about war. Let's talk about something nobody is thinking about completely and totally out of the perspective because you only have one knowledge of war. Your war has graduated. Bigger explosions. Better ways to explode. <laughs> Higher yields. Weapons that fire faster. That's how it's grown. There hasn't been anything called anti-war, has there? I'm going to tell you something. There is physics that is possible that will create certain kinds of fields. Listen to me. Certain kinds of fields that are multidimensional that will not begin to even touch consciousness or biology. They will be completely blind to these fields because they're isolated and specifically for one purpose, and that is to keep an explosion from happening. 
Can you imagine putting a field around a building so that no matter what is fired, whether it's a machine gun or a pistol, simply won't work? What about targeting an airplane when it drops a bomb and it won't work? This is physics. You don't believe it? Just wait. As you start to discover that which is multidimensional physics and the ability to control it, you'll even have the ability to create massless objects. By the way, that has another name. You call it anti-gravity. That's wrong. There's no such thing. But there is the ability to control the mass of an object. You understand that's simple physics, don't you? And it's rewritable. Gravity is not caused specifically by mass. It's an attribute of mass, which is rewritable and controllable. Just like you have learned to control certain kinds of physics now that's 3D, you can also control multidimensional physics. Imagine a planet where no matter what you exploded, it wouldn't work anymore. What do you think about that? Do you think that would change politics? It's happening. It's going to happen. It's in the laboratory today. You're broaching the discovery of multidimensional physics, being able to control that which you don't think is controllable. It's going to make such a difference to the human race, such a difference. Health. Health, simple health. Turning to that which is physics for some of the simplest things. New kinds of food, not chemistry, food. Grown with the new kinds of physics. <laughs> not genetically altered, not chemically altered, but a benevolent physics that causes a new kind of growth that'll feed the planet in a way it's never been fed before. With foods that is resistant to absolutely everything that you would put in your body and it would then resist bacteria and disease through physics. Who thought of that? What you're seeing in health, you're seeing based upon the past. Not what you don't know. Finally, I want to talk about spirituality. New Ager, I want you to get real with me for a moment. We're heading for an ascended planet. Everything I have told you for 26 years has been about that. Human beings starting to evolve spiritually. The DNA starts to become more efficient. The masters of the past you start to recognize are the ones who were examples that had DNA working at a very high percentage. You saw that each one of them in all their instructions and teachings were trying to show you this. All of them were human beings. None of them were angels. There's a reason for this. So that the human can face off with the human and say, look at me. Look what I can do. And you can too. If you get in touch with that which is inside you, which is the seed of the Creator. And you start to evolve and you start to have wisdom and knowledge. It creates peace on earth and more. What is an ascended planet going to look like? New Ager, metaphysician, you have an idea, don't you? First of all, the end of religion. <laughs> Everyone's going to think alike. You'll be floating around. You might even change colors. An ascended planet will be one where you only have consciousness. You won't need the body. You name it. This is what you think. And I'm here to tell you something. On this planet, right now, if you think that, you have it wrong. 
It's bigger than that. It's better than that. Believe it. It's better than that. What kind of free choice would you have if there were not choices? Listen to me. You don't homogenize a planet through wisdom. What you do through wisdom is get along. <laughs> you don't become the same. And there will never be a time when you don't have free choice. I realize. My partner just told me I used a double negative. <laughs> you will always have free choice on this planet of the energy that you wish to take as your own. But the wiser the planet becomes, the path to enlightenment, that is, to see the light and to find the Creator, will be greater, and that's the path that over 90% will take. You will always have those who don't agree, but you will get along. There will be wisdom, so there will be no more war. There will be certain kinds of physics and invention to prohibit it. There will be healing and lifespans that will triple and quadruple the human race and the wisdom will increase. You get to a place where you look a whole lot like you look now and you get along. Religion? It will simply get wiser. And what that means is that it will morph. There will be new leaders claiming new kinds of things. They will then become the doctrine. The shift in energy will be obvious and the doctrine will change accordingly because the leaders will be in touch with God and be believed. Therefore, they will then create new doctrines which will be those which get along. They'll understand it's okay to embrace every kind of different religion. You can stay in your box and still love one, someone in another box. Isn't that wisdom? It's different than you thought, isn't it? The Pleiadians had a planet which became so evolved they could control that which was their physical. Physics was controllable by consciousness. This is where it's going. Life force itself could be then restricted to consciousness without a body and through entanglement travel to another place. They're still here. The physics of that requires that you understand it cannot go back to the physical. You must stay in a, an ageless consciousness state without physicality. I know for some of you I am talking in riddles and some of you know exactly where I'm going with this. This can be you too and it won't be for a million years. This happens slowly. It's happened before. You're on the cusp of discovery of how it works. And it won't work through anything you think you know. <laughs> the knowledge filter, the biggest restriction you have to truth, and it's being broken, broken down, dissolved by old souls like you, thinking beyond the box of the way it used to be or what might happen, sitting there with their arms out, saying to spirit, bring it on. It doesn't have to be what we think. <laughs> You're the ones to make the difference on the planet. The last one is important, spirituality. I want you to take the attributes of mastery. I want you to stop being strange. <laughs> like a master of the planet a loving person that people want to be with because you have the attributes of mastery. You're balanced. When somebody comes to you, you know how to hold them, hug them, hold their hand, listen to what they have to say, cry with them if you need to, laugh with them, 
when you need to. That's what the masters of this planet have done. They understand human nature. You're an old soul. You've been there and you've done it. There is no excuse for you not understanding. This is your legacy. This is who you are. I'm crying in love with humanity. And so it is.